conference going for all of you. Hopefully you can hear me. Good, all set for the LL Cool J and whatever, the roots, all set for it? Awesome, all right, let's have some fun. So my name is Vijay Tiwari, I'm on LinkedIn. Let's try and figure out if I can get you to find me, connect with me, and then I've just posted the session stuff, go like it and try and get more people to join in. All right, let's go. So my name is Vijay Tiwari, last name is T as in Tom, E as in Edward, W as in Whiskey, A as in Apple, R as in Roger, I as in India. All right, let's go. Come on. Let's see if you find folks. <clears throat> found me? Not yet? Not exciting enough? <clears throat> I'm on X, sorry, Twitter too. My handle is vtango in case you want to chat with me there as well. Happy to sort of engage with you there. And again, uh, selfish interest. After all, clearly you're interested in backup and disaster recovery. We represent the backup and disaster recovery team. So we want to continue this dialogue, not just about the session, but beyond this as well. So that's part of the reason. All right, let's see. Somebody, no? Yeah, okay. Two people. Oh, uh, yeah, awesome. That's great, awesome. Three, awesome. Let's keep going. <clears throat> So what's been the most exciting announcement for you from Next, besides the AI stuff? Anyone want to take a crack at it? Come on, there's been so much stuff that we've announced, or is it too much? <clears throat> Anyone? Sorry? Oh, Kubernetes Enterprise, that's awesome, that's great. We've got a story for that, that's awesome, that's great. What else? Alloy DB, but Alloy DB was GA before this too. Yes. Awesome, that's great. Yep. What else? <clears throat> what about? Sorry. I, I beg your pardon. Do it, AI. Oh, do it. Okay, that's that's AI. Okay, awesome. <laughs> AI by definition is exciting, so I'm trying to find other exciting things. <laughs> what else? Like sorry. Like of compute instances. Awesome, that's great, yeah. Very cool feature, what else? <clears throat> Anybody else? All right, now let's talk about AI. What about AI was exciting? <laughs> Come on, let's go. Do it Terraform integration, that's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, that's good, yeah. We've been experimenting, obviously, with BARD internally quite a bit and do it to figure out uh, how it is, and you know, I'll tell you an example of hallucination. So way, way back early, we started and we asked Bard to tell us, how do you back up a, a VM? And it spit out some beautifully formatted text, click on this button, that button. Problem was there was no such button that existed. So it took a little while for us to sort of get the model right, and it's, it's a work in progress, but we made a lot of, you know, sort of work gone into sort of getting that there. So, and of course, it's a work in progress, so use it, give feedback, and continue down the path. It's one of those things that will only improve if all of you use it. Yeah. And then I discovered an awesome feature yesterday. So Radha and a couple of us were at dinner yesterday. It turns out my watch said that I was exercising on a bike while I was having dinner. That's the kind of watch I want, awesome. <laughs> For 35 minutes it said I was having rigorous exercise on my bike while I was having dinner. I feel good about it now. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Any last minute thoughts on what other thing was exciting while you're here? Well, we really are re grateful that you come down to the conference. It's really great to be back together in, in, in person. We've done this virtually over the last few years. To be honest, this is my first attendance physically with, uh, with the Next as well. So I joined Google in 2020, the, the day Google shut down for remote work, or rather we were not allowed to come into the office. So I have the dubious distinction of not having gone through what is called as a Google tech immersion in, in Google, because they didn't know what to do with us when we joined Google. So I learned through all the people who joined in the team. Yeah, so all right, so that's great. So Laura wanted to come on board. <clears throat> Let's get started. Thank you so much, really appreciate it. <clears throat>
Oh, Vijay, thank you so much. Maybe I should ask people to uh, join my LinkedIn. So before we start, welcome to ARC 200. I want to get a sense of who's in the audience. I, I see maybe some GKE folks over there who are excited about enterprise. So first question, who here is responsible for security? Oh, that's a lot of people, okay. Who here is responsible for backup and recovery? All right. And who here is in DevOps? Well, this is a great representation of so many different functions. And the good news is we're going to have content that's relevant to all of you. So stay tuned. You will get to hear from Vijay soon. All right. So let me introduce our folks uh, who are sitting over here. So we have a wonderful customer, Dr. Radu Banabik, who comes to us from Cyberhaven. He is a co-founder and VP of engineering of that company. Now this is a very exciting security company, startup, and he'll tell you a little bit more about this company, but one of the things that I found very interesting is that they use data lineage to identify suspicious activity. And in fact, to do that, they have developed a trillion scale graph to look at all the data moving throughout the enterprise. So uh, later on, those in uh, security area can talk to Radu and ask him their questions uh, about his company and technology. Now, I'm Laura Finkelstein. You can also find me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm responsible for outbound product management for the backup area. Vijay Tiwari, who you have already met, is the person responsible for all product management for our data protection products. And you're also going to hear from Radha Mathur, who is within Vijay's organization, who will show you some demos later. And she's responsible for the Google Cloud Backup and DR product. So I want to give you a map of what we're going to be talking about today so you know what's coming. I'm going to talk to you first about an overview of the IT challenges that you probably are facing, maybe not all of them, but many of them. Then I'm going to be turning it over to Vijay, who's going to go into a deeper dive uh, first on the Google Cloud portfolio uh, for backup, as well as a specific product called Google Cloud Backup and DR. Then um, Vijay is going to bring onto the stage Radha, who's going to talk to you about, show you how we defend against malicious activities, and just talk to you about why backup is so essential for security. Then Vijay, again, is going to deep dive into the backup for GKE product. Again, something very interesting to the DevOps folks here. And Radu is going to join us on stage because he's a super user of GKE and backup for GKE. And he's going to talk to you about how it's benefited his company. And then finally, we're going to just summarize and give you a chance to ask your questions. So with that, let's get started. So you might have seen this uh, slide here if you went to the presentation that Sachin Gupta gave earlier. But really, what I wanted to point out is, even though you're coming from disparate functions, on top of that, you have a myriad of different workloads that you're responsible for. And so this is kind of trying to capture, there are AI workloads, there's traditional workloads. What we're going to talk about today is security and availability for those workloads. So I don't need to tell you that data is the lifeblood of your organization and that making sure that it's secure and available is very difficult because there's so many potential risks that are there to take that data away or make it unavailable. Now, what I wanted to mention is that because Google also believes that securing your data is so critical, Google has released in the last year two new data protection products that you're going to hear about in detail today. The first one, Google Cloud Backup and DR, is a product that covers a large number of workloads, both on-premises and within the cloud. And then the other new product is a product built specifically for GKE that deeply understands the nuances and constructs of your GKE clusters and namespaces, and it helps you to back that up and recreate clusters exactly like they were before. So let's talk about some of those challenges. First and foremost, many of you, particularly security folks, are worried about cyber attacks. Now, the problem here is that these perpetrators 
are going to be able to get in on any surface. So you can't defend across all surfaces. So inevitably, they're going to get in. And so this is where backups come in to be able to recover from this problem. Now, the interesting one to me is I've heard from numerous customers that their biggest worry is user error, the old fat finger. And so this is the problem that you are most likely to bump into. And problematically, you could be not only losing your data, but to potentially the backups associated with that. So we're going to talk to you about how you can defend against that as well. And another non-malicious risk is that you do a software upgrade or you change your pipeline for your CI CD and something breaks. And so you really want to immediately go back to the last known state. This is really critical to keep your productivity and your business operations going. And then compliance, the ability to protect that data, to keep it around as long as you need to, and to potentially put it in the location you need to because of other regulations. The last two that I want to mention is, yes, occasionally Google goes down. And in those situations, you're going to want to have backups that are in a different region so you can just bring up your operations and continue in that new region. And then finally, there are some positive aspects of backups that are not about dealing with disasters. And that is using backups to really optimize your operations to move the operations to a better place for performance or cost optimization, as well as use your backup data to develop your applications and ensure that they're working before you roll them out into production. Oops, am I going the wrong way here? I am. Here we go. So what you're going to hear from Vijay and the team today is really how do we address these issues that we talked about on the previous page. One of those approaches you're going to hear about is how do I deal with malicious attacks? And two of the things that we are delivering capability-wise within our backup products is, first of all, immutable backups. So no one can modify, encrypt, change, corrupt those backups. They are there to be rolled back when you need them. Second, and very importantly, indelible backups. This means that no one can delete them, either externally or internally. It might be accidental, as we talked about, from a user error, or it could be a bad internal perpetrator. So we will talk to you about how we prevent, when you don't want those backups being deleted by anyone, the indelible backups. The other thing that we're going to talk to you about is how these Google products integrate with other Google products to allow you to look at unified logging, unified identity and access management, and a, the ability to really manage your workloads and resources in a centralized, seamless way. And then finally, you're going to hear, as we talked about earlier, how you use these products to improve your operations, that proactive approach. And so with that said, I'm going to turn the baton over to Vijay, who you've already met. And he's going to dive into that. Thank you so much, uh, Laura. Really appreciate it. So first of all, just to, you know, I represent the work of over 100 plus engineers. So thank you so much for attending. And it's, it's really great for them to see the passion that you have in this space. So thank you so much for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through how Google thinks about backup and disaster recovery, right? So the couple of major things that we think are fundamental to this, which I think Laura has already talked you through, I'm going to talk you to some of the core capabilities that we have in the platform which provides backup functionality to you, right? So this is a bit of a, you know, a big chart, but let me walk you through it, right? So from a customer standpoint, you can interact with Google Cloud in a variety of different ways, through the API, through the G Cloud command line interface, through the user experience, or through other automation tools like Terraform. Right? They layer on top of what we call as Google APIs. All those tools, all those UI layer on top of Google APIs. On the back end, what we have done is all the core services that we have, whether it is persistent disks, whether it is Alloy DB, whether it is GKE, whether it is BigQuery, Cloud SQL, we are working with all of those teams for those teams to build core primitives for backup into those products, 
right? So if you are a kind of a customer who doesn't really need a finished backup and disaster recovery product, but are quite comfortable of scripting your way and sort of orchestrating backups across these individual resources, by all means, we have a solution for you, right? That's what represents the absolute right side of this chart, right? You can orchestrate it, script it, GL, you know, command line it, whatever it is that's available for you to use. However, you know, that works for some customers, but then a vast majority of customers need an actual backup and disaster recovery product which can aggregate the ability for you to take and apply backup policies across multiple different elements that constitute your workloads. I've come across many customers who are basically saying, look, I've got a bunch of compute that's running in GKE. I've got the backend infrastructure for that application sitting in a Cloud SQL database. And I want to be able to consistently define a backup policy which says, I want you to be able to back up the compute and the database consistently at, you know, take it daily and retain it for seven days, take it weekly and retain that for 24 days and take it monthly and retain that for a year. That's what Google Cloud Backup and DR as a product is designed to do, right? So it augments the functionality that you get with the core primitives, but layers on sophisticated capabilities on top of that, like reporting, you know, uh, uh, sophisticated monitoring, sophisticated alerting, right? A couple of things I want you to think about when you think about Google Cloud Backup, backup and DR. So, during the session or maybe after the session, go log into the cloud console and go look for backup and DR. It's actually a product in Pantheon, you'll, well, not, sorry. Pantheon is the internal code name for the UI. The UI, you'll actually see the backup and DR product there. And what it offers you there is the ability to back up a robust set of workloads that we support today. So if you're running on GCE VMs, you're running on GCVE, you're running SAP, Oracle, MySQL, uh, SQL Server, we support backups for all those workloads. In addition, if you've got on-premises assets, right? You've got a VMware infrastructure on-premises and you want to be able to support backing that up into GCP. You can retain like the previous seven days of backup locally, but you actually want to back up, you know, long-term retention into GCP, that's another scenario that we support as well, right? The benefits that you get with Google Cloud Backup and DR is that it's, it's Google, so that means all the security benefits, all the IAM compliance, all the RBAC integration, you get as a part of Google Cloud Backup and DR, right? Um, and obviously, by virtue of being Google Cloud Backup and DR, it affords us the opportunity to give you Google tooling for what you get accustomed to using when you're using Google. So you can walk up to the cloud monitoring console in GCP, and you'll be able to see all the monitoring data from backups. If you want to be able to get an email every Friday which says, tell me all the backups that failed during the week, we can do that and cloud alerting can send this communication across multiple different communication channels, right? So that's the benefit that you accrue from using something like Google Cloud Backup and DR, fair? So now that I've actually sort of given you a high level view of how we think about the core platform primitives and how Google Cloud Backup and DR actually layers over the same primitives, right? To offer you an end-to-end -end backup managed solution. Let's hear from a customer who actually has done this in practice, right? So um, Francisco is the CTO of LATAM Airlines, right? One of the largest airlines in, in the LATAM domain. Uh, and they have been, he's one of those visionary leaders who took a big bet on cloud a while back and they are almost done, if not already done, in migrating all the data centers off into a cloud platform, right? And they took a big bet with us early on. So without ado, let's roll the video. You can see, hear from him himself. <clears throat> Can we play the first video, please? Yeah. Oh, sorry, can you hear the, uh, cue the sound if possible? LATAM Airline is the leading airline in South America with a five-star global rating. And earlier this year, we achieved to become a 100% cloud airline by closing all of our data center and moving all of our workloads to GCP. The criticality of our operation and the sensitivity of our data 
make it very important to have a solid backup strategy. GCBDR is our trusted backup solution for our GCP workloads. GCBDR help us meet compliance requirements and satisfy regulatory obligation for data protection. We protect a broad portfolio of workloads, more than 1,000 production workloads with dozens of components running in four regions. The ability to define and enforce complex policy for frequency retention and expiration of backups and the flexibility to apply different policies based on criticality of the workloads help us achieve compliance across workloads. Another relevant aspect using GCDDR is the ability to consistently manage backups for multiple GCP workloads from a single pane of glass. Be it our Oracle database, VMware instances, or our GCE VMs and Cloud SQL instances, we can manage backup using the single product. The fact that the service is an integral part of the GCP platform makes it very easy to operate by governing access and monitoring backups operation via the cloud monitoring services. Last but not least, working with GCP and incorporating GCBDR backups as part of our cloud adoption has been a true partnership. There is a great responsiveness to our needs and support always is available. We value our partnership and will continue to deploy additional workloads leveraging GCBDR backups. Thank you, Francisco. Uh, so the one thing I want to share now is that we really believe that today's ransomware threats makes your backup systems, whatever it is, a key part of your security posture, right? Security is backup and backup is security, right? And if you're thinking about backups when you're actually already under attack, unfortunately, it's a little too late. So I'd encourage you all to take backups. If you don't want to use Google Cloud Backup and DR, that's fine. Definitely back up your data, right? Today, the threat of ransomware is, is exceptionally high. And I'll actually share a story of how it happened with one of our customers, right? Uh, the next thing I want you to think about is this framework. So there is a really good framework by NIST, which is an organization in the US which has actually put out a framework on how you should think about your cyber resilience posture, right? And there are two things I want to highlight in this. Google has a lot of products that cover many, many aspects of this, not the least of which is Mandiant, another services company that Google has. Think about how you want to protect your workloads and think about how you want to recover your workloads. That is where Google Cloud Backup and DR and all the backup capabilities that we have invested in fit into your overall cyber resilience posture, okay? So now let me walk you through a, a, a real life example of a cyber, uh, cyber attack that happened, right? So this was a customer, they have about 30 plus factories in many locations. Each of them actually had about a three or a four node VMware cluster. They had a central headquarter location which was a slightly larger VMware cluster. They had about 900 VMs spread out across these 30 plus geographic locations, okay? And they were actually backing up and sending, they had a local copy for quick recovery, but they are sending their data back up into GCP for protection. Okay, and then they were hit by a very sophisticated attack. Some of you may have heard of that attack vector. It's called Black Cat slash Alpha V, right? Now this is a highly sophisticated attack vector that actually originates in being able to use Active Directory group policy objects to then distribute payloads into various elements of your environment. And then from there, they basically go encrypt your data, right? And then they surface a threat to you and say, look, if you need your data back, I'm going to, are you going to have to pay me some money to actually, uh, you know, get me to decrypt the data? Or they also have a threat of being able to release that data to the public domain. So this customer, you know, unfortunately didn't have a very sophisticated XDR system, right? So they were not able to detect the attack very quickly, but as soon as it was detected, you know, the good thing we were able to do was to very quickly, because their on-prem environments were highly suspect at this point of time. 
By virtue of the fact that we had backups in GCP, we have a Google Cloud VMware engine service, we were able to very quickly bring those backups back into GCP very quickly, right? Within days, we were able to bring back all those 900 VMs, right? And the customer was back and operational, and then... Okay, sorry, I didn't want to talk to you. But, um, um, so, um, and so they were able to recover those workloads, and then they were able to actually get operational, and so that's something that was a really benefit that they saw out of this, while they went and cleaned up their on-premises environment. So here, you know, the act of being able to air gap, logically air gap, and keep their backups in a separate location was highly beneficial, because they didn't, uh, weren't impacted by the, you know, the, the, the dangers of the ransomware encrypting their backups themselves. So that was a hugely valuable proposition. Not the least of which was to mention that GCV itself offers some very sophisticated networking capabilities, which allowed them to firewall plants and they brought them back up. So they were able to actually utilize that isolation. They were able to use HCX network extensions to make sure that they were able to span their uh, network. So there were some really cool things that they were able to do uh, in the context of responding to an attack like this, okay? So now that we've done this, what I'd like to do is to bring on uh, Radha Chandrasekhar Mathur, and she'll walk you through some more details of the actual product that actually helped this kind of a recovery. Radha? Thank you, Vijay. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm very excited to show you the technology that makes cyber recovery from backups possible. Uh, let us begin. I think we want to bring our demo video on. In this uh, demo, I'm going to show you how to back up on-premises VMware workloads and recover them in a logically air-gapped environment in Google Cloud VMware Engine. To support this use case, a backup appliance, which is the data mover component of the backup and DR service, is deployed on-premises along with the workloads that need to be backed up. The other component is the management console, which is what we're looking at. This serves as the management plane for multiple such backup appliances, and this is where backups are configured. The first step is to create a backup plan. Let us go look at an existing backup plan, which has policies for scheduling, retention, and storage. The first rule in this backup plan is for snapshots, which are stored on-premises in a storage pool, and here the frequency is every four hours and retention seven days. The second rule is for cloud backups. These are stored in a Google Cloud storage based on Vault pool in the cloud. And because they are intended for long-term retention, the uh, you know, retention is set to 90 days. Once a backup plan with such rules is defined, the next step is to apply them to the workloads. We do that in the backup and recover section. Here we see the list of compute environments and database applications that can be backed up using Google Cloud Backup and DR service. Backup and DR agents are used to back up this wide range of databases that are displayed here. Today's scenario doesn't employ an agent. Clicking on VMware starts the process of discovering a VMware environment. We gave vCenter information, selected the ESX cluster, then we get the list of VMs, select and group them, and apply the backup plan. This completes the process of configuring backup for on-premises VMware workloads. All the selected workloads are now protected. Ongoing backup operations are monitored using the Backup and DR dashboard. This provides information such as job status, protection status, alerts, events, as well as storage information across all protected workloads. Cloud backups provide a great safety net from ransomware. Backup and DR service enables recovering from these cloud backups right in the cloud, as Vijay described, using Google Cloud VMware Engine. Let's see how that works. The first step is to deploy a new backup appliance, which is deployed in the cloud. Because backups were stored in a Google Cloud storage based on vault pool, the new backup appliance can use the on vault pool, which is in cloud, and discover the VMs and all the backups that were created. We can see here, how a new backup appliance has discovered the VMs that were protected and their backups. To initiate recovery, we select a workload, 
And the next step is to select the backup or recovery point from a catalog of backups. I'm going to wait till we bring up the catalog. Here we can see both on-premises uh, snapshots that were created as well as all the cloud backups for this workload. We can jump to a pre previous point in time. And after selecting the recovery point, the next step is to provide the GCVE uh, environment information where we want this VM to be recovered. A recovery job gets initiated, the job monitor shows us its status, and once this job is complete, a vSphere client can be used to point to the vCenter, which is in Google Cloud VMware Engine, and we can see that the workload we recovered has become available here for use. This is how Google Cloud Backup and DR service enables recovery of on-premises VMware workloads in the cloud using the logically air-gapped GCVE environment. That's pretty cool, Radha. Thank you so much for showing us this demo. What about what are we doing next in this space? I'm excited to share. Oh, excuse me. Can we switch back to the slides? I'm excited to share how we are taking this up a notch. We saw how to recover from cyber attacks. Now we are enabling the ability to do early detection and proactive prevention of attacks. Google Cloud Backup and DR is integrating with Google Cloud Security Command Center, where destructive actions from the backup system, such as deletion of backups, removal of workloads from protection, will be propagated to the Security Command Center. Security Command Center, or SCC, will not only provide alerts uh, of, uh, based on that uh, events, but it will also enable correlation of these events with other actions such as security breaches. That's pretty cool. Um, so let's show you another demo on how we do this in the context of GKE. We are running a little bit short of time, so could we just move forward a little bit, uh, Kyra? That will be very helpful for us. <clears throat> We'll see how to protect uh, this, backup the, for the, GKE yeah. workloads, and then we will see how to use backup world functionality to safeguard these backups from ransomware. So we're going to move a little forward. Yeah. We're skipping over the part where we apply a backup plan to workloads, but we look at an existing backup plan and start from there. We're looking at the backup for GKE interface. It's a part of the Kubernetes engine section of the Google Cloud Console. Kara, is there a network issue with getting to the video, I think? There are 20,000 of you trying to access the network. What backup network will survive that? You tell me that. <laughs> All right, I think it, seem, it seems to be, we seem to be having some trouble with the video. Let's see, let Kara, could you try one more try? If not, then I'll walk you through this demo in, in, uh, in the context of the talk track that I have for this. All right, that's fine. Let's go on to the slides. I'll, I'll walk you through. Thank you so much, Radha. Really appreciate it. All right. All right, so um, unfortunately, we couldn't show you the demo, but what I'd like to show you is, is the following, right? So what is backup for GKE, right? We recognize that, you know, clearly as the DevOps movement took uh, sort of, move, took, sort of uh, took to ground, a lot of customers are coming to Google, the home of Kubernetes, and adopting GKE. Right? But we needed a way for those customers to also protect their workloads, right? And what I mean by protect their workloads actually spans multiple things in the context of GKE. First and foremost is when you're deploying clusters in GKE, you want to make sure that your cluster configuration is backed up, right? So we offer an ability for you to say, look, I don't want to worry about data because my state is sitting in some external data store, like a Cloud SQL, AlloyDB, GCS, whatever it is. I just want to make sure that the configuration of my Kubernetes clusters is backed up, right? So we offer that ability, right? We call them stateless clusters. 
We can back it up, you can restore it. You can restore it whether you're doing it for, you know, using a uh, GitOps operation, you're doing CI, CD, and want to be able to, you know, recover, roll back to a different cluster state, no problem at all. Another place we people see using this is for migration of clusters from one region to another. The next place is obviously in case you want to actually do have state inside containers, right? So if you've got persistent disks that are plumbed into your Kubernetes clusters, and you've got pods where you want to be able to back up these things. We've got uh, a, 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 an ability for you to be able to schedule backups for Kubernetes using both stateless and stateful clusters, right? So we'll be able to back up the disk. Plus, we also offer a hook. So if you've got you know, some sophisticated acquire sim algorithm that you want to run on your workload, you know, tickle this, ping this, and then I'll acquire the database, then take the snapshot. We've got a sidecar architecture which allows you to run your code, which acquires the workload that's running inside that container before you actually take snapshot of the disk, right? And then obviously we, uh, we enable recovery of that within GKE as well, right? The other thing I'd like you to focus on is actually, you know, the, 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 the UI itself. So this is the UI of GKE. Right, And if you actually go see right here, this is backup that's embedded right into the user experience for GKE. So if you've got a DevOps team or developers who are actually working through the UI or through Terraform or through G Cloud, they can get a seamless experience where you can define the policy and then the developers can basically just enable the policy and you can make sure that you know, their workloads are backed up. So you as backup administrators are not worried about, my God, did my Kubernetes platform owners, did they actually back up the clusters or not, right? Set the policy and it's in their flow, in their tooling, right with where they are, right? So that's an opportunity of um, how we are trying to integrate with the workloads. In fact, you'll see us do more of this with backup and DR. We'll integrate into GCE, we'll integrate into Cloud SQL. Our goal really is to be fundamental to the workload itself is how you'll be able to backup. Make sense? All right, so I think I've given you enough of a snap. So what the demo was really going to show you was this thing in action. And more importantly, it was going to show you that backup for GKE already has the ability to have immutable and indelible backups, right? That means you can put the backup into a snapshot and say, I've locked the key. I don't want anybody to delete this backup for the next 30 days. And we'll enforce that retention period for you, right? Come what may, it's protected from any super user. Nobody can go and delete that basic backup. So that's the capability that's already available for you to use in the context of GKE. What I'd like to do now is to invite Radu. He is, um, you know, as, as rather, uh, 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 you know, Laura already introduced him. He's from Cyber Haven, so go ahead, please, Radu. Thanks, Vijay. So, uh... I'd like to first introduce the company and product a bit, and then we'll talk a bit about how we use Google Backup. Uh, we're a cybersecurity company. We're a startup, relatively midway in the journey. We're past Series B and close to Series C. And our product protects enterprise data. And the way it does that is by mapping out all of the movement of the data within various locations in the company. And why that's helpful is that by doing this, we can protect data based on lineage. So in the context of DLP, I know that there are sec some security people in the audience, rather than saying I want to prevent data containing three letters, four digits, and a dot from going to uh, chat applications, we can say I don't want my data from the legal folder in Google Drive going to chat. That's much easier, much more intuitive, as well as much more powerful. How that translates to the technical side is we are essentially manipulating a very large graph, very large meaning, meaning literally trillions of nodes, and on this graph we are constantly doing scans, aggregations, and modifications. It actually modifies thousands of times per second. That's a very tough problem, and actually there isn't, uh, we didn't find a good way to just take an out-of-the-box solution to do all of this data processing for us, so we built our own system on top of a bunch of uh, different services. They are all Google services like BigQuery, PubSub, uh, Bigtable. And then we have uh, our own code acting basically as the glue, putting all of this data together to form this complex graph model. And this is where uh, uh, Google Backup for GK really comes in. It uh, makes all of our work much easier. So it sounds like you re-archited the application to utilize core GCP services like Bigtable and others, and you got a tremendous amount of benefit from that. But tell us a little more about 
what backup for GKE gave you, and how did it help you improve your posture? All right, so uh, I guess the short story, what I like about backup for GKE is that it just works. It goes very deep in GKE. We are using a lot of uh, Google services, so it just covers everything out of the box. It has deep integration with uh, all of the different resources that we have, and it covers everything as the application uh, evolves. We are uh, still in the early stage of our journey, so the application evolves very rapidly, and that means that we are adding new services and might forget to add backups for that. With Google Backup for GKE, we know that we don't have to have developers or we don't have to have processes to make sure that we don't forget to config backups for something. Backup for GKE does that, does that for us. That's really fantastic, Radu. Thank you so much for being a great advocate for Backup for GKE. Uh, but not only that, being a, being a great partner through the cycle of as we develop this. Now I'm gonna put you a little bit on the spot and ask you in front of all of these people, what is the next thing you would like us to do in backup for GKE? What I think would make a lot of sense is to have backup evolve from uh, purely doing backups to being more of a coordination service for snapshots. Uh, we have a bunch of different services running in different projects in Google, and managing the backups around among all of these different uh, projects is quite complex. So what I really like from backup for GKE is to become a let's say, a, a coordination module for the distributed snapshot mechanism where we can have a consistent snapshot across all of these services done at the same, at a single point in time. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Radu, for it here. And he's going to be around here at the end of the session, so please catch him and he'll be able to answer questions for you. Thank you so much, Radu. Really appreciate it. All right, so I think, uh, first of all, I apologize for the video not playing up for the, for the backup uh, uh, session. Uh, I will uh, point out one more thing. We will make sure that the demo is recorded and available to you, so the recording of the session will have a link to the video that you can play for the backup for GKE DMA as well, right? So you've seen variants of this slide already. The key takeaway I want all of you to remember is that Google Cloud has invested deeply in making sure you have backup functionality to protect against ransomware at every layer of the stack. Me, as the owner of the backup and DR product, utilize the same APIs that you have if you want to directly go to the Cloud SQL API, the BigQuery API, the Persistent Disk API. It's all in your hands if you want to do it. But then we've taken the pain to make sure that we can give you a finished, managed, end-to-end -end service as well, which will give you things like indelible and immutable backups, sophisticated scheduling, integration with cloud monitoring, so you can get all the capabilities that you're used to in a robust backup solution that gives you reporting, monitoring, and all of these functionalities, right? And then the last thing I want you to remember is, because we are deeply integrated into Google, it greatly simplifies the operational model that you all have to learn. You don't have to relearn some other thing, it's all Google, we use the same RBAC model, the same IAM model, so it helps you. Um, you know, one of the things that you'll, you'll hear quite often from the security community is secure by default, right? And we take a lot of pride in making sure that when we deploy and we manage your backups, we are secure by default. So you get all the benefit of the learning that we as a backup and DR team have accrued over petabytes of data that we back up, which we share back into the product to make sure that the product in, captures all those best practices for you, right? So it's available now for all of you to use in the context of GKE, deeply integrated. Google Cloud Backup and DR is available for you as well. Uh, so thank you so much. I want to leave some time for, for questions. So that brings me to the end of my, my talk track. So happy to take and answer any questions that you have.